Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, this is J.R. Fisher here with the Digital Cash Academy, Ecom Road, and Web Cash Academy. And we're going to be talking about SEO today. But before we get going, I would like to introduce Jessica. Say Good hello. Good morning. Hello, everybody. So Jessica is going to be over there, guys. If you look at your little box there and you click um, where it says questions, um, you can put questions in there. And I see Ferris Muhammad's here. Jennifer's here. Type in that box, guys, and let me see where you are from right now. Uh, I see Mark. I see Antonio. Everybody's saying good morning. Somebody says it's two o'clock in the morning. Be interesting to know what time zone you're in. Uh, who else is in there? UK, Bharat Patel in the UK. And we got Carl in Louisiana. And let's see here. Who else we got? Uh, Amjad Akhtar, I think that's right. Cool. New York. And we got Jennifer's in Kentucky and Walter, uh, is in Greece. Very cool. Walter, New Jersey, Sherry, Calpe, Spain, Bruce, uh, Victoria, Virginia. Hey, Victoria, I used to live in Virginia. I'd be interested where you're at in Virginia. I used to live there. We moved actually from, um, Chesapeake, Virginia to San Diego We've got Nerman in Chicago. Uh, let's see, Northeast Ohio is Larry. Bahrain, very cool. Muhammad, uh, who else we got here? Rizwan is from Malaysia. Denise from Arizona. We've got Andreas from the Philippines. Oh my goodness, guys, you're all over the place. Debbie's in Houston. Uh, cool, very cool. Pennsylvania, we got another Debbie. Uh, Dan, Dan's in there, Dan's. <laughs> Been with electricity i've been talking to him los angeles carl australia wow we've got a packed house today guys and and you know this is a really cool session i know we've got there's stephanie there i've been talking to stephanie a little bit online um we've been um talking about a lot of different things we have to do victoria's in chesapeake how about that victoria very cool we were in the greenbrier area i don't know if you know where that's at and i actually lived out in um hickory area but my business was in greenbrier um so very cool. Um, let's see here. We are going to be talking about SEO today. Now, the funny thing about SEO is that um, it's changed a lot. You know, what you had to do before and what you have to do now are two and separate things. So let me get this screen up here and we'll get started on this. Um, so what's needed for SEO in 2018? And like I say, guys, if you have questions, because this is going to get a little bit complicated in just a second. If you have questions, feel free to type them in there. Uh, I won't see them, but Jessica will, so she'll shout them out to me. Plus, she's going to be typing in there, answering some of your questions. So let's, you know, before we, you know, let, let me explain what SEO is, because some of you may not know, it's just search engine optimization. So basically what search engine optimization is, it's setting up your product pages, your blogs, your homepage, and all that, so that when Google's search engine goes out there, which is Hummingbird right now, that's their newest version of their algorithm, um, it finds your pages and it brings them back so that people can see what you've got, okay? So that is something um, that we wanna do. We want our pages to show up, um, but it's not as easy as it used to be. You know, it used to be we just did a few simple steps and boom, we're at the top of the rankings. It's not like that now. So what I wanna do is I wanna really go into detail what this algorithm does and what it's looking for. Because if you know what it's looking for, then you can provide that to them. Uh, and then, of course, you're gonna get better ranking. So here is the newest part of Hummingbird. It's called Rank Brain. Now, if anybody's ever heard of Rank Brain before, you can certainly type in that comment section there. I would love to see if anybody knows anything about that. Um, but Rank Brain is what they use now. And it's a whole new game. Um, this is actually a machine, um, artificial intelligence. So what it's really doing is it's teaching itself. Okay. And I know that's really weird because normally, you know, you, you teach these AI things, but this one actually teaches itself based on, you know, what it's doing. So let's look at what it's doing here. And I'm also going to give you an example of a company that used this to the nth degree and really, really benefit from it. And you can too. Okay. Now, Something I am going to tell you is this is work, okay? So those of you who uh, think that, you know, you can go into online marketing and, you know, work four hours a week and make millions of dollars, it doesn't happen in the beginning. Now, it can happen later on. I know that for a fact because we've sold millions of dollars worth of products. 
But the thing is, you've got to put in the work up front, you know, and you're either going to put in this work up front, you know, for yourself or somebody else is going to make you put in work and you're going to be, you know, building their dream for them. So that would be called your boss. So either way, you got to work. You're not getting out of this. So why not do some for yourself? Uh, and even if you've got a job, you know, do the stuff on the side. So let's get into rank brain right now. Let's see what it is. So I've got some results up here on the screen right now. And what I did is I ran a search for Survival K Food, which is one of our products. I got millions of results, but these were on the front page, okay? So what happens when these results come out? Well, it used to be, you know, Google would just present these um, results to people and they would click on them and that would be the end of the story. Well, that's actually the beginning of the story now because what happens now is it looks for certain things and it brings forth these results. But based on what happens with the actual results, it's going to rank them accordingly. So let's say, you know, somebody clicked on, I don't know, I see Survival Warehouse there. That's one of our retailers. Um, and let's kind of break down, you know, what he's got there. Uh, he's got Survival K Food brand. OK, so when I ran the search, I ran Survival K Food. So obviously that that's his title. OK, and I'll go back on this in just a second and explain all this to you. So that's his title tag. That is not the you know title he has on his page, but that's his ta a title tag and his SEO for his web page. Now, somebody may be saying, "Well, geez, where's my SEO?" It's different, really, for everything. Um, it's it's different for you know Shopify. It's going to be a different spot for WordPress. It's going to be a different spot for Magento, depending on what your platform is. If you're doing click funnels, they have a different spot for all this stuff. So you just got to figure out where where your SEO spots are for your for your um, information so it shows up here so if these results come up and people start clicking on them um, and let me get through to the next screen here um, they click on this one here they focus on two things okay the first thing they focus on is the percentage of people who click on the result so where does that come from that's your click-through rate so there you know when this when these results come up they they derive a certain number of people that see it and then they say, okay, out of these 10 results, let's say number three got, you know, 60% of the people clicked on it. So immediately what RankBrain does is says, well, you know, there's a higher percentage of people that are clicking on this number three result. We need to move it up. Okay. We need to get it higher in the results because people are clicking on it. They like it. So, you know, everybody thinks that Google is your enemy. Google's really your friend. You know, they are trying to give the end user exactly what they want. OK, so they're trying to make the end user happy. So if you play along and you try to make the end user happy, you're going to benefit, too. So what happens now? The next thing they look at is the length of time that people actually stay on your page. Now, this is called dwell time. So we've got two statistics here. We've got the click through rate, uh, which is simply, you know, what percent of the people are clicking through that see this. And then we've got dwell time. So in that, that example I just gave you where, let's say, number three, a lot of people clicked on it. Let's say 60% of the people were clicking on it. The next thing that Rank Brain is going to look at is, well, how long did they stay on that page when they got there? Now, if, they, if a lot of people click on it and you write some really compelling you know, descriptions and titles and tons of people click on it, but when they get to your page, there's really nothing of value there. They leave. Well, then what's going to happen is... Um, they're going to say, well, you have a low dwell time. So we're going to drop you down in the results, even though you had a high click through rate. So, you know, it used to be, and we'll go through all the steps in just a second. There were just a few things you had to worry about, but now you got to worry about, you know, getting that click through rate, which means writing really compelling, you know, title tags and descriptions and offers and all that stuff. And when they get there, you got to keep them there for a while because Google is actually watching how long they stay on your page. I know that's kind of creepy, right? But they're doing it. So you have to become a click through rate ninja. OK, so how are you going to do that? Uh, well, there's certain things you need to do uh, to get those people to click through there. And you got to work on those things. And we're going to talk about those in just a second. And, you know, the cool thing is, is let's say you've got a really engaging page and you got a high dwell time. Google is going to bring up your result higher in the search results, even if you don't have good title tags and good descriptions, because that's now part of the algorithm that wasn't there before. All right. Hope that makes sense. And type in the box. Like I say, guys, if I'm if I'm going too fast or this is over your head or, or whatever it is, I want to know. I'll make sure I'm reaching you and you understand what I'm talking about. All right. So 
here's the scary thing right now, guys. It used to be people were clicking through. Thank you, David. Uh, David says great stuff. Uh, it used to be people were clicking through at a pretty high rate. But check this out. Now, in 2018, their click-through rate is now what? It's 37% less than what it was in 2015. So if you're not doing these things that we need to do, you're going to be losing customers, you know? And if you're losing customers and traffic, it's going to cost you money. So, the, you know, the, the things I'm going to suggest that you do in just a minute, I'm going to give you proof that they work. You know, obviously, you want some proof. You want to know they work. But I'm telling you, you have to do them. You know, it's not like, you know, you can just add, a, you know, I, I see so many people will start with a Shopify store or they'll shop with um, or start with a WordPress store. And uh, they all they do is add products. You know, they, they go to Oberlo or they go to Dropify and they just keep adding tons of products. And they go, well, look, I got 3000 products on my site. I'm like, yeah, but nobody's ever going to see them because you don't have it optimized. And if you don't have it optimized, it doesn't matter. You'd do better off to have five products on your site than a thousand and have them all really, really optimized. You'd be selling the crap of those five items. So let's look at how we're going to do that and how we can actually improve our site because that's the main goal here is to improve the site, make more money, get more people there. If you get more eyes on your site, obviously you make more money. And if you have really great content on your site, um, obviously then, you know, they're going to stay longer. You're going to even get better results. It's, it's, it's this big circle, okay? So the old days, these are the old days. And when I, when I say old days, you know, I learned to do this like in 2010, we had to do these things. The first thing we had to do is we had to have a title tag. Now, all a title tag is, is that first sentence that comes up in the search results. It's that bolded sentence that, you know, is above everything in your search results. I'm showing you with my hands here, by the way. That probably doesn't work. Um, so that's all that is, okay? The next one is the URL name. So like if you typed in Survival K Food right now, that's the name of my website where we sell our survival food from. So obviously, you know, Google looks at that and goes, well, that's probably a good result for that. So, you know, if you can have the, these words in your URL name, it's helpful. It doesn't matter as much nowadays, but, you know, it used to. Um, also, alt image. So if you have an image on your site, a lot of people put images on there, but they don't tag those images with some type of description on it. So if I were to have, you know, like a case of our beef there and it's 12 cans and I have a picture of that, that particular product on the site, I need to go into that image itself. And like I said, it's going to be different for every platform. And I need to call that image what it is. Um, you know, blind people also use the internet and these alt images, they can hover over and that can actually speak to them and tell them what that picture is. So if you have those alt images in there, Google says, well, hey, this site is trying to give the right information and it's trying to explain to everybody, even somebody who's blind on the Internet. So we want to make sure we do that. Next thing is the description. Now, this description is kind of tricky because we want to describe what the item is, but we don't want to just describe that. We want to have some type of call to action. So, you know, in a case like our, our canned meats, you know, or beef, we may say it's 12 cans of you know, canned beef, you know, long-term survival food, but we may also sell, say, fast shipping, you know, wide variety available, um, shop now, you know, we may put some, you know, words in there that are going to make them click and make them want to do something. So we got to make sure we have that in the description. And the last thing is your H1 tag. Now the H1 tag is really, you know, if you go into Word or whatever, you can make something an H1 tag. All it is is a bolded certain size of text. So if Google sees that, they know that, and, and that matches what the people are searching for, they know that you've done what you should. Now, I say this is the old days because these are the things you used to have to do. And guess what? You still have to do them. They still have to be done. Because think about this, and you got to work this through, you know, your own mind a little bit. If you don't have a title tag and a, a, a alt image and description H1 tag, how in the world is Google going to bring back your search result? I mean, it's not possible, right? It's, it doesn't exist. There's nothing to show the customer. So you got to make sure you go in and do this on every single product. It's time consuming. It's boring. You know, if you don't want to do it, you can always hire somebody to, you know, do your SEO, but um, it's got to be done. Now, either way, it's just got to be done. But there's more things we have to do nowadays. So let's talk about it. It's all about content now. So remember we talked about dwell time a couple minutes ago? What's going to make people dwell or stay on your page? It's going to be content, okay? What that page is all about. So 
it's, it's product content. So if you have some products on your page and they say, you know, men's gold watch with black band, you know, how long could I stay on that page? I mean, I just, I can't stay there very long, right? It takes me no time at all to read that sentence. Um, but if you have a really, really compelling description about, you know, where that watch was made and, you know, uh, the design of it and the designer behind it, um, you know, and testimonials of customers who bought that watch, there's more content for me to read on that page. And if there's more content for me to read on that page and you've really put a lot of content in there, well, I'm going to stay longer. And if I'm going to stay longer, rank brain's going to look at me and go, gee, you know, JR really stayed a long time on this page. It must be a really compelling page. We think we're going to put that higher in the rankings. And if it goes higher in the rankings, guess what happens? More people click on it. And if more people click on it, right, you see what's going on here is I'm getting better and better rankings on this product. So the next thing is it's got to be useful or helpful content. Now, this could be on a product or this could be on a blog. So, you know, maybe you have a blog and if you're selling men's watches and in the blog, it talks about all the different types of watches, you know, that are made in the history of watches and, you know, why people wear watches and, you know, how a lot of people wear them for just fashion now or whatever. But it's it's something that the, the, the consumer can read about. You know, I see so many pages on Shopify and the people have the product listed and they have the weight and the dimensions. And it's like, OK, you know, that's that's great, but that's not interesting. It's not helpful. You know, maybe it's a little helpful if I know how big the watch is, but it's really got to be a lot more in depth, guys. You got to got to put more effort into this stuff if you want people to stay on your site, which is what you want them to do. Right. Uh, and I do want to warn you guys, I, I forgot to say this in the beginning. We are full. So if you get out of this webinar now and somebody else grabs your spot, you're not going to be able to get in. We're, we're thinking about increasing the number of spots because this thing keeps filling up. So uh, don't get out of the webinar. You will lose your spot. Uh, and, you know, if you got any distractions going on, please turn them off. We're going to be done here in a few minutes. And this stuff could make you millions of dollars if you get it dialed in. And I'm going to prove it to you at the very end of this webinar. Matter of fact, I'm going to prove to you how you can make billions of dollars at the end of this webinar. OK, so that's that's useful just to stick around and see that because it's a really cool example. So how much? How much do you have to do this stuff? You know, what, what's required? What are, you know, what's the parameters? Everybody wants to know how much and when, okay? Um, so let's take a look at it. Well, first off, we want to look at quality. We have to have high quality. So if you are importing products from Shopify, you can pretty much bet you've got low quality content written, okay? Um, they're just doing the bare minimum what they have to do. It may not translate well into English. Uh, or if you're doing this in another language, I know we have people from all around the world watching this. Make sure that whoever your target audience is, what part of the world it is, that it is written in very good quality uh, uh, content, that they understand it, that the wording is correct. OK, very, very important. OK, also quantity. you got to have enough information. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but if you don't have a lot of information on your page, how in the world are you going to have a high dwell rate? or a length of time that people are going to stay there. You know, you've got to have a lot of, lot of information. I'm going to tell you how much in just a second. Um, and you also have to be a consistent. Okay. So let's say you're doing blogs, make sure that, you know, you don't do like five blogs today and then none for four weeks. It just makes no sense. Okay. Your people need that consistency. So if you're doing a blog or you're doing any type of informational stuff, it should be on a regular basis. So let's say maybe, it comes out, you know, on Mondays and Wednesdays, and that's that's kind of what we do. Uh, it comes out on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then on Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, we run offers of whatever our products are. So they're getting that good content, plus they're getting the offer, because you don't have a right to give them an offer if you're not giving them good content also, but it's got to be consistent, okay? Now, if you are writing stuff, here's what we figured out in all of the surveys. It takes about 2,000 words on a page to have the best dwell rate, 2,000. Now, go back and look at your page and look at how many words you got there. What we figured out was at, at, at 2,000 words, that's about where most people will really stay on your page the longest, okay? More than that, you're going to lose some anyhow because they're just not going to read it. But less than that, and I'm going to have to downsize my page just for a second, guys. I apologize. I'm trying to scroll through here. Uh, and I wanted to get to something to show you. Okay, so let's get back on here. So 2,000 words is the optimum. If you have 2,000 words in there, 
they're going to stay a lot longer, okay? Uh, and how much longer are they going to stay? Here's what we figured out. 25% consumption rate is what the average person does. So think about this. It doesn't matter if you have 100 words on your page or 2,000 words on your page. The average person will only consume 25% of what the content is, 25%. Now, that's not to say some people don't read every single word because they do, or some people will click there and go right back off again, you know, because they do that too. But on average, 25% consumption rate. So if you've got 2,000 words on there and you got a 25% consumption rate, they're going to read about 500 words on there. That takes some time. And, that, and, that, and if you look at other web pages out there, most web pages are not doing this, okay? So I'm telling you stuff that you could be doing that could help you jump ahead of everybody else, right? And that's what you want to do. You need to get this information before everybody else does, okay? And this is brand new for 2018. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add LSI keywords. If you know what an LSI keyword is, go ahead and type it in that little box there now. Don't Google it. Don't do that. Don't cheat. Because if you get out of the webinar, first off, you know, you're going to lose your spot. So let's talk about LSI keywords, okay, and what they are. So we're going to add these. LSI keyword is a keyword that is systematically linked to a main keyword, okay? So like in a nutshell, LSI keywords are keywords that we generally find related to a main keyword. For example, apple, right, which means could mean a fruit, but it's also an LSI keyword for iPhone. Does that make sense to everybody? You kind of see how that works? I'm also going to give you, because um, you're going to need this, I'm going to give you a free website in just a second, and you're going to be able to go and figure out what your LSI keywords are for any search term, okay? This is a free site I'm going to give you. Uh, and there's the site right there, and I'm going to show you how to use it in just a second, too, but it is lsigraph.com. So you'll want to go to lsigraph.com. Don't go there now. You can do this later, okay? Uh, but let me show you kind of an example. When you get there, this is what you're going to see. This is the LSI graph. So what LSI stands for is latent somatic indexing, okay? So what uh, Google is doing is as people search on a daily basis, it's deriving all these other words that match up to your keyword. And at this site here, uh, you can actually put in your keywords, which is what I did. I put in survival foods and I searched. And this is the results screen I got right here. This is the LSI graph. So they're saying, you know, if I have foods with long term shelf life, dried foods for long term storage, uh, survival food supplies. So what I'm telling you here is on your pages, if you incorporate some of these words right here and you put those on your pages, whether it be a blog, whether it be, you know, your product page or whatever, you are going to get higher search results. Pretty cool stuff, right? And you don't even have to figure out what words to put there because you can use this free tool that I just gave you. Awesome stuff, right? Um, if you understand that, also put that in the box there and let me know that you're understanding what I'm talking about because this is a little advanced for some of you newer people. But it's okay, you know, I mean, when you first see this stuff, it's going to seem a little foreign, but as you, you know, are adding products, it's really better if you're in the beginning and you're just starting to add products that you do all of this with your products, uh, as opposed to, you know, adding 2000 products and working on it for two months and really having nobody go to your site because you haven't done this. So you want to optimize your content. Very, very important. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is if your website is set up for mobile, you want to move it to responsive design. And the difference is a lot of these templates that are, say, mobile, they don't work on all mobile. Mobile is changing constantly. So what we want to do is go into our settings, and it's different for every site. It's different for Shopify. It's different. And, you know, there's, there's apps you can get. It's different for WordPress. It's different for Magento, whatever you're using, you know, WooCommerce, doesn't matter. But you want to switch it to responsive design because what that's going to do is that's going to allow the content itself to adjust to whatever that screen is or that phone or whatever. Okay, next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that your content looks great on mobile. So once you've done this, you want to actually go and look. So many people will make all these changes and do all these things and they never look at their own site. You know, and I'll look at it and I'll say, did you realize this on your site? And they're like, no, I've never looked at it. I'm like, well, you got to look at your site. You know, it's kind of like cooking and never, you know, tasting the food. It's like, well, I made this recipe. I'm just going to serve it up and see what happens. You got to taste it, right? You got to see what's going on. You can always tell a bad cook. They don't taste as they go, right? If anybody of you cook out there, you know that they just don't taste stuff as they go. So a good content marketer, a good person who's an e-commerce person is constantly looking at what they've done. 
next thing is use video content this is huge guys uh, and i'm going to give you an uh, uh, unbelievable example of this in just a second about a company that used video but you if you put video on your site you are going to jump ahead of so many people um this video can be in blog form where you're talking this video can be in product demonstration form it can be in all kinds of different forms it doesn't have to be long it could be a minute video it could be a 30 second video uh, if you have video testimonials of your customers put those on your page but video content is huge and like i said i'm going to give you an example of this in just a second um and i'm going to call it go chewy now in the comment box there and i'm going to downsize my screen for just a second because i want to look at these here uh i want you to put in the comments if you know who chewy is okay just put in the comments if you know who chewy is and i'm looking through here do you have anybody just says they know who chewy is um, a few yeah. a few oh yes 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 somebody says got it spot on got it understand brilliant pet food well yeah they got pet food site for pet food chewbacca no it's not chewbacca <laughs> that's funny though thanks uh from star wars no uh, our mexican friend no here's what chewy is chewy is this website right here now and i, I gotta move my screen again i apologize for this thing keeps it's going to keep going down like that because every time i click that's just the way this works so this is one of the products on chewy okay now on chewy they started this company in 2011 and what they do is they deliver all types of pet products to people's homes and, and there's so many good things going on on this page so many that i, I just i got to point out some okay so let's let's look at what they've got here they've got the description of it okay well, this product i pulled up here is greenies regular dental dog treats below that they have reviews they got 1192 reviews and it looks like almost five stars and but and next to that check this out 23 answered questions on this one product so a customer can click on that and see all these questions that people asked um, and then they've got free one to two day shipping okay so they're hitting on all the stuff here they have a discounted price they're showing you how much you save they I, I actually have auto ship where you can buy this and it automatically you know you can get it shipped to your house every month right and you save five percent so they're hitting on every single thing and then below that they have quantity discounts okay you can get a three count six twelve eighteen twenty seven thirty six and on top of that, they have the 36 highlighted, so it defaults to that one, okay? Now, on top of all that, um, they have saved 20% today when you uh, set up your first auto ship. Um, so look at how many things they've done here to get people to buy. And here's the biggest thing, they have an employee talking about that product. Now, this is what really propelled Chewy to the top of the rung here every single product on chewy and i guess there's what thousands of them right jessica you, know, you buy from there don't you yep, yeah sure do. why did you buy from there oh the convenience the selection um gosh just being able with the auto ship was really cool um yeah this is this is how i learned about chewy actually from her guys <laughs> but they yeah. put videos on every single product amazing okay and you know and some people get lazy with their shopify stores they're like well i don't i don't even have one of those products well get one order a product to have it do a short video you'll be amazed what that'll do for your sales you don't even have to be in it if you don't want to. you could just show your hands you know the middle part of your body or you can you can go to fiverr and people will do product demonstrations for like 10 20 bucks you can hire people to do these videos for you it's really simple to do so check this out um 55 percent of google searches include at least one video on the result so you can see the direction it's going right now they are looking for you know probably other 45 percent they couldn't find them you know but they are trying to bring back only pages with videos on them now so if you've just got you know product pictures on your page you got to do more you got to work more you got to work harder okay so you know these are just things you have to do somebody said they also had 24 7 customer service they have great customer service so they built this reputation so i will tell you they weren't making money at all though but they built up a huge clientele because they had one thing in mind does everybody know what they had in mind does anybody know what they had in mind when they started chewy put in that comment box there if you knew getting any comments in there jessica 
They said they somebody commented that they wanted to lose money. No, they didn't want to lose money. Puppies. No puppies. No, it wasn't puppies. They have one thing in mind when they built this this get emails. You're getting really warm right now. Provide provide a service. Yeah, but that's not quite it. Customer you're getting close. Here's what they wanted to do. They wanted to dominate the market in pet supplies. Why? Why did they want to dominate the market if they're not really making money? Let me show you why. Because Pet Smart agreed in April of 2017 to buy Chewy for $3.35 billion. Now, who thinks that's good money? Does anybody think that's good money? Maybe they didn't make a lot before that. But see, what they did was is they gobbled up a market. Uh, Antonio says, sweet. Yeah, they just gobbled up a market and they did it by using videos. You can do this too. You can do this, right? You can step ahead of everybody else if you want by just putting videos on your site. And their okay? SEO is really good. Their SEO is really, really good. Yeah. Really so it's all these things. So it used to be, you used to just do that list of SEO things I told you about. And nowadays you got to do that plus some. But the point is, if you do these things, you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. Because I'll tell you, most people are lazy. Most people will, you know, uh, put up a site and want to import a product and not even write their own descriptions. I mean, this is ridiculous, you know. But if you do all these things and, you know, you're going to have to spend time anyhow. Jennifer says, this is great. Well, good, Jennifer. I'm glad you like it. Um, if, you, if you're going to spend, so, so most people will spend all their time on putting tons of products on the site. They'll, they'll spend 10, 12 hours a day just importing products to their site and thinking that they're, they're going to have this great site because they got all these products, but nobody's ever going there. You know, you do much better to put one product on your site per day, do a little video, write tons of content on it and stick that out there and you will get far better results. Now, I'm also, if you're, if you're in the uh, DCA group, Thank you, David. I appreciate the kind words. If you're in the DCA group, I'm going to repost this webinar and I want you to go back through and look at that Chewy page, okay? Or just go to Chewy.com and look at any of their pages. You know, it's pretty simple to do that. But, you know, the, the point is, if you have good SEO nowadays, because everybody was saying, well, SEO is dead. SEO doesn't work anymore. You can't get on, you know, the first page. You can if you do some of this stuff, okay? Because other people aren't going to do it. I can tell you. 99% of the people who own websites out there don't want to have to do this work. They just don't want to have to do it. So if you're the one percenter that does it, you know, you're going to get good results. So let's do a little bit of Q&A now, guys. Uh, feel free, you know, um, I, I'd like for it to be on topic, but if you've got some other questions, I've only got a few minutes here. I can answer a few questions. Um, but keep in mind, you know, I, I charge for my advice. You know, I, I, I do coaching for people. Um, so, you know, I charge a lot of money to do that and you can ask questions right here now for free. So, you know, uh, I would advise you doing that if you want to do that. Um, video editing software, video editing software. I love it. Um, you know, a lot of video editing software comes free with whatever uh, system you have. I know Microsoft has free one, uh, and I can't think of what Microsoft is cause I don't use it. Uh, I know with, um, Apple, it's iMovie, um, but you, you could Google that, you know, and, and that comes with it. Now, if you want to have a little bit better stuff, I highly recommend something like Camtasia. Uh, Camtasia, iMovie, that's what somebody thinks, Mark. I appreciate that. Movie Maker, uh, David said also. Uh, those are some free ones. Um, you can use uh, Final Cut Pro. We have Final Cut Pro. I really, really like Camtasia. Uh, and just because I like it doesn't mean you will. Uh, but I can use it really simple. I can do screen captures. I can, you know, videotape my screen. I can do all that stuff. Um, so you may want to check out that. It's it's really good software. Uh, other questions we've got in there right now. Um, well, I, I have two that are kind of on the same page. Um, for people that just recently signed up and are building out their mix stores with DCA, um, do you recommend they do all of the content on the mix store or more so in a niche store once they get to that point? Guy, and I hate to tell you that you're not going to want to hear my answer, both. Because, you know, if you're driving traffic to a page and you want to get, you know, some rankings for it and you want people to stay there, you got to do it twice. But here's the good part. If you've done it in your mix store, you've got it for your niche store. You just copy it over. So it's pretty simple. So it's not like you've got to do the same thing all over again, but I, I do highly recommend you doing that. 
Um, what was Mark says something about spelled? What is that? What is I he, don't know. What do you mean, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what you mean. Uh, Mark also likes Camtasia. Um, is there a checklist? You know, yeah, there's a, there's a, a real simple one. I would go to that Chewy page. You know, that's a good point, though, Chris. Um, he says in there, is there a checklist for this? Um, I could put something together, uh, but you can certainly go to that uh, Chewy page, man. I mean, because they're just, they're perfect. I mean, they're one of the best examples I've seen. Uh, and the uh, end result was $3.35 billion. Um, Stephanie's asking a question there, Jessica. Can you tell me what that is? Uh, what if the name of my store doesn't describe my products being a mixed store? It's not that important nowadays. I mean, if you can get that, that's cool. Uh, it's much harder to get that nowadays because, you know, so many URLs have been bought. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it that much. That's that's one small piece of the puzzle. And, you know, Hummingbird uh, is the actual algorithm. And, you know, Rain Brain is or, or Grant Brain is just one part of Hummingbird. I know they get all these weird names for stuff. Um, you got some questions in there, Jessica. I saw Colleen said something about 2,000 words. I can't see the question. Yeah, so she was asking about the length of video. Um, to get that same dwell rate for right months. right well you know i wouldn't you know i wouldn't put an hour long video on there though some of my pages actually do have those because they have coaching calls on there um but you know you want it to be descriptive you don't want to here's what what you worry about you want it to be good content so if you've got an hour long video and it's boring as heck nobody's going to watch it anyhow you'd do better off to have a three minute one you know, that really describes some stuff. I mean, if you can get somebody to stay on your page for three minutes, that's huge. Three minutes is a long time. And if you think about it, think how many times you go to a page and you click and then you click off almost immediately, okay? So um, if you can, you know, three to five minutes, I think is great for descriptive video, but if you only can do a minute, you're still gonna be ahead of most people, okay? Um, somebody said something one to three minutes VSL. Yeah, there could be VSLs like that, but I, I got to tell you, I've got 40 minute VSLs on some of my stuff too. And people sit through that. I'm amazed sometimes people sit through hours. I mean, you guys have been on here, right? <laughs> We've been on here 43 minutes already. So, you know, people will stick around if it's good content. You know, Colleen says, thank you. Good. And somebody's also saying, you know, what if I do 4,000 words? Well, you have a drop off rate. That's why I'm saying 2000 words after 2000 words. You don't gain that much from it. Maybe you'll gain some, but not enough to where it's going to, you know, take your time you know, or use up your time to do that. So I wouldn't do that. I, I would think 2000 words is good enough. And you can also take that 2000 words and apply it to a video. Um, you can type in Google, you know, 2000 words equals how many minutes of talk time. It'll tell you. Uh, and you'll, you'll probably hit, I don't know, around five minutes. I'm guessing right now. I have no clue. Um, but you know, you can also do it that way. You can kind of work it backwards. Uh, so I can take maybe one or two more questions. I have a very important luncheon to go to, which is every Friday. And if you, if you know what that is, you can click in the box there. I have this lunch every Friday. Uh, and if you know what it is, put it in the box there. Some people are trying to guess now. Somebody says business lunch. Uh, only if it's monkey business. So it's not really business lunch um but just put in the box if you think you know what that is because if you follow me on facebook at all on my personal page you would know the answer to this question denise says lunch with the family that's close that's close new restaurant i'm getting let's see what else i'm getting in here in and out in and out in and out's pretty good that is not on my friday Michael lunch though uh who got it Michael got it, lunch with your wife. That's right. So Jessica is my wife, in case you don't know that. And every Friday, we take off a little early and we go to lunch. That's one thing we do. Now, you know, you may think, well, I'm living the laptop lifestyle. I've taken off all this time. I work a lot of Saturdays and Sundays, guys. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you I don't work. I do work. You know, I'm, I'm proud of that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Michael, yes, you do win a prize. You do get a prize. I'm going to email you over a gold star. You can print that out and you can put it on your wall. So you will get a gold star. I hope you appreciate that. Uh, a couple of people says, awesome. Yeah, if you got something out of this, guys, put it in there. Let me know. He's happy about his gold star. <laughs> Let me know if you got something out of this. Uh, if you have suggestions for stuff that you need help on, you know, let me know that. Uh, somebody says that resolves some of their problems. Yes, LSI is cool. Yeah, that's a really cool tool, guys. And I try to give you the free ones because we don't want to spend money if we don't have to, right? Um, 
always happy to show up Corey. thank you very much excellent webinar ralph i appreciate it <clears throat> very informative thank you marla mark is in there glad to know old what is it glad to know old seo i can't see it all glad to know old seo tools still have a place in google's latest algorithm yes they do they do they just keep adding to it uh jennifer says great insight danny says thanks uh thanks from bruce i appreciate that okay guys i'm gonna head out of here now i really appreciate your attention i appreciate you being here and i look forward to seeing you on the next coaching call and hit me up in the group too uh, if you're not in the group it's called the art of e-commerce success you can join that group you can get on our mailing list and we don't bombard you with a bunch of spam or anything we just give you some free training free training is good so i will see you in the group and i will see you on the next coaching call you guys have a great day jessica would you like to say goodbye Bye. Goodbye, everybody.